it's our camp. See this right here? It's bear poop. Thought I was gonna pass out. You kind of have to earn the scenery. Well, where's that trail gonna be? So that whole train walk was not on the CT. <laughs> this dude has the largest pack I have ever seen someone backpack with. Well, we're definitely stuck in traffic on the million dollar highway. Weather channel said 98. So we'll see what the car says. Guys, 100 degrees in the shade. So here at Outdoor Vitals, we design ultralight backpacking gear. We really choose to focus on the performance of that gear, which means that we spend a lot of time out in the field testing our gear firsthand. Once a month, us as a team, we get out on trail together and we backpack. The OV100 is a 100 mile challenge that we created at Outdoor Vitals to help people to become more capable and confident in the backcountry. Because we created it, we always plan a 100 mile trip to uh, go on with our team and take part in that challenge with all of our participants that are doing it all at the same time in the summer. And so this year we thought it would be really cool to do a section of the Colorado Trail. We'll be climbing those peaks in no time. Did you bring your snow gators, Taysom? I think I wish I would brought some shoes. That looks like more snow than we were hoping to hike through. <laughs> we thought it would be cool to do the whole thing as a team by section hiking it over four years. And so that was kind of where um, we started with planning this trip. We were initially going to go southbound and start in Denver and go towards Durango, but um, due to the heat of the summer and some of the snowpack, we decided to start on the south end at Durango and work our way north uh, and go just past uh, Silverton. We're a little bit limited with what we can do with our families, a lot of the guys have kids, so Five days is what we gave ourselves. We knew that with our training, as all of us were keeping up with the training framework, we would be able to physically achieve that. So we have uh, Tyler, Derek, Brigham, and myself, who have all completed 100 mile hikes together prior to this. What did you book us, Brigham? We got the three twins. <laughs> three twins? Yep. Oh man. Is that your hiking robe? Came with the master suite over here. Really? Another one and some flip flops. Oh, really? Hey guys. Hey, don't you uh, go peeking on me in here. <laughs> <laughs> this one is a lot further from home than some of our past trips, and so the logistics were just a little more difficult to figure out. Last night, this curtain was just like funneling all kinds of freezing cold air onto me all night, so I used every blanket I could possibly find and pulled it up over my head. What we ended up settling on was going to Silverton and spending the night prior to hitting the trail. And we left our car in Silverton and we hired a shuttle company to drive us down to Durango so that we could uh, start at the south terminus of the trail. Pre-departure, what are your thoughts? I'm glad when it's not uh, this warm. <laughs> it was pretty warm. And by pretty warm, I mean it was, it was hot. I'll be excited to eat some food. To, uh, reduce get, pack size. Reduce some pack size a little. See me and Payson. We're we're above the full. Calories and then we add up the calories that we bring. These guys just wing it. So we yeah. brought a lot more food than they did. I'm hit go on the watch. I already did. Yep. Says I've gone 0 .01 miles. Colorado Trail, Durango. End for most, beginning for us. So we're gonna go. What? Yeah, we're gonna end about right here. Start, come up through Silverton area, end about right there. And then in future years, hopefully, we'll get to Denver. We do have some mountain lion company, Ooh. and some black bears, and Dogs. some poodles. Those ones are the most scary. Poodles are the most scary. One of the things I'm most nervous for uh, day one is heat. I hope that as we climb, it gets kind of a little bit cool, but our shuttle ride was really hot. I don't know if it was just the van or what, but there was like, it felt like a heater blowing on me the entire time. There was like a heat wave that was just kind of all over the Western states at that time. I want to say by the time we started hiking, it was probably nine. 
uh, maybe a little after 9 a.m. We're passing a lot of people, a lot of people that are day hiking in that area. Um, talked to a few people that knew us down in the bottom as well. I'm oh, sunshine. You're sunshine. <laughs> I like that. The sunshine and coffee. Awesome. Yeah. You guys are from where at? Thermal, Oklahoma. But we just started climbing and that was the day, right? We were just climbing and climbing and climbing. We just did our first stop for filtering water. And as soon as we stopped, uh, we were immediately swarmed by like a ton of horse flies. He just flew into my nose so hard. Good thing your nose is smaller than his body. Yeah. <laughs> They're big enough. <laughs> Look at these horse flies. So I can get them to land on me. Let one land on you and... and so the size uh, of my nail. Bite you and you'll see how much you bleed. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. Horse fly river. Glad to be leaving. So far we've climbed 500 feet. Just like 3,500 feet at least to go. Here's our first glimpse of the high country up here. A little bit of snow peeking through. I'm nervous about it being hot today, and it was. So <laughs> we stopped and had lunch. There was kind of a big outcropping on the edge of a you know mountainside where we did have a bit of a view, and we could all kind of like pull out our pads and um, sit on some rocks and relax a bit. Right, that right there. That's why we have white fabric, unmelted, yeah. melted. Difference of being inside and. Yeah in black or white fabric. Almost kind of want to fall asleep. It's nice. In the shade, there finally is a breeze blowing all day long. It's been really hot so far, first half of the day, and there has been pretty much zero breeze, but now it's just barely starting to pick up. So this is a really good, really good lunch spot. Before we took off on the trail today, I pulled open our OV100 Facebook group and just looking at people that have been completing their 100 mile challenges. Super inspiring, super cool to hear the stories, the relationships, the growth, that's all happened there. So I'm excited. We're just starting out and you never know what you're gonna learn and grow and what kind of experiences you're gonna have on an adventure like this. I think we're about six miles in. I think we've overtaken about four groups of hikers, got stopped by some that, that knew us and we talked to them for a while, but haven't had too many distractions so far. So we've been clicking off the miles at a really quick rate. So it's been an awesome morning, but I'm definitely excited to be getting up here into the high country now and just have it cool off. It's, it's been hot and a little bit less scenic when you're down low because you're in the trees, but we're getting glimpses now of why we came out here to the Colorado Trail and we're excited about it. Currently surrounded by these really tall flowers. Just catching up to the rest of the group, I had to take a pit stop, but these are like as tall as me, some of them, it's crazy. I wish someone would turn off the oven. <laughs> the blow dryer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's... Who chose this time of year anyway? <laughs> That's why we go to the high country this time of year is to escape the heat, but uh, so far, not happening. All right, so we just stopped and got some water after a seven and a half mile section of very hot, dry country. We're sitting at 11 and a half miles on the day and we're trying to get to about 23 miles on the day. So we still got a lot of miles left to go. And uh, we we're talking to some of the CT hikers that were there. One of them pulled out his trail guidebook and showed us the, the climb we're gonna do to get up to our, where we're hoping to camp tonight. And it was about 3000 feet of a solid straight up climb. So we're already at 27, 2800 feet of climbing. So probably get to 6,000 feet of climbing on the day if we go all the way to Taylor's Lake. So we'll see if we make it. This is our uh, traditional juice up for the climb. Did you eat your whole ration? Nope. Oh. Nope. Right. Juice Pretty time. Tropical Hi, smoothie flavor. I'm just gonna roll the dice and see what's in that left pocket on the top. Craisins. Crazy about crazies. Yep. We have over 3,000 feet of climbing still to go, and we're just about to tick over 3,000 feet, so. Yeah, I question if it's if it's really worth getting to Taylor Lake. There's no break of 
you know, from the uphill. It, there's no flat almost. It was crazy to me. I think let's go to dinner three miles more up the trail and talk about how many more miles we really want to do today. I think we should probably at least try to get our 20. Good news. Some clouds rolled in and it's not nearly as hot. Right here is this little bridge. Now we've got to the bottom of this valley. There seemed to be a little bit of weariness, I would say, just of the distance we've gone, how hot it was, water availability. It's Tyler trying to find some water in that tiny little water source. Towards the end of the day, we stop at a place for dinner. Everyone's kind of getting tired. Well, obviously, we're pretty dang wiped out having sweat our guts out all day long. Practically speaking, the terrain that we were on at the time was not conducive to setting up four tents. <clears throat> Personally, I'm a little weary about this, but we're gonna try to slow down our pace and just climb up and out of here. Um, I think this is gonna be probably the first or second hardest day on the trail is my guess. Do so you know what time it is? What time Almost it? seven. It's almost seven, seven. o'clock, so hopefully we can kind of climb up out of here, maybe take the next two hours and get to camp at about nine. We're gonna get uh, accused of being day hikers by the time you get out of here. <laughs> Okay. That's, how, that's how you know we're making a really light. <laughs> so, so I'd say we amicably agreed to, to keep going. There's our bear poop, so it's a great place to camp. Just gotta climb up and out of this tonight. Meanwhile, our trail's still going downhill, which makes no sense. And that is a pretty daunting looking climb tonight. That after dinner mile was an especially hard one. It was still very hot. It was extremely steep right where we were starting off. You kept looking up and you thought you could see the top and you'd go another mile and you still can't see the top. And so that was um, how that evening went for us. Hey girls, I just wanted to say good night. We're uh, right at 20 miles on the day and we're way the heck up here on these big mountains so i don't know if i'll have service at camp but i just wanted to say i love you and i hope you have a good night and a good day tomorrow i'd probably the second steepest poop of my life <laughs> just barely man it was uh tricky by the time we got up to the very top it was just about dark and it was starting to cool off. We were covered in sweat, so we were cooling off faster than we wanted to. The climbing is done for the day. Hopefully. Cracked over 6,000 feet just now. Gonna come down, get some water, and find us a camping spot. That spot, yeah. We made it. How many miles you got? 21.4. 21.4? 21.4. Derek's got 22, that's what I'm counting. Honestly, we didn't quite make it to the lake that we originally planned to make it to. It was pretty brutal today with the heat and then we climbed about 6,000 feet in elevation, so that was a doozy. So the recovery on my watch says overnight I recovered to 13%. How'd you sleep, Tayson? Not great. Um, when we got to camp, I sat down right here and I had some food and then I stood up and my ab, my lower ab cramped up. And I went and stood over here and thought I was gonna pass out. Like I, it was like so intense that I thought I was just gonna, <laughs> I actually went to my knees for a second because uh, I thought I was gonna fall down. And then um, my body just kept cramping everything. So like my foot cramped, my inner leg cramped, my back cramped. Just started like shutting down, it was weird. Oh, yikes. And, uh, and then I just got like really cold, so. <clears throat> I couldn't even like take my, so I slept half the night with one sock on, because every time I'd try to reach for my sock, I would cramp up. Oof. It was very ginger, right? Getting out of the tent, it was like, okay, where am I, right? Like, 
where is my body at? How much has it recovered? I was probably just, instead of being a little more cheery and, and happy, I was like on a mission to get as much calories down as I can and as much water down as I can. All right, just starting day two on the trail. Um, I slept pretty decent last night. My legs are they're a little tired, but no real soreness. Um, the only time that we've done as much climbing in a day as we did yesterday was when we did the Grand Canyon rim to rim to rim. Marmot Pass. We just got done having breakfast on that little hill there, filtering some water. We're gonna do a nice climb up through this crazy looking pass. We're gonna walk another five-ish miles from here to get to water. And then we've got about a 15 mile dry section. The morning of day two was a pretty awesome surprise. We were right out on the edge of these cliffs. There was beautiful wildflowers all around us. And uh, it was a really nice, beautiful morning. And it was kind of a convergence of like three different ranges, three different ridges coming in. And uh, we thought it was cool enough that we decided to stop and take our like cliche annual group photo. We probably spent a little too long taking photos and hanging around there because we realized like, oh, hey, all we've done is get water and take some photos and it's like mid morning already. Day one was a bit of a, just a, a grind. Uh, well, it was really, really hot the majority of the day. Just one of those day ones that you kind of have to earn to get to the scenery. We crossed uh, a couple government guys that were just happy to be out there, uh, you know, working. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, they were really nice guys. They were pretty, they were pretty stoked that they were getting paid to be out there. And it took a little bit of the spark out of their eyes when we told them that we were also being paid to be out there. Dropped back into tree line. I think we're gonna go find the last water source for the next uh, 15 or so miles. So by lunchtime I had gotten refueled and, and got to a good spot, which was really important because we were about to embark on a large water carry. Probably need everything we can possibly get for this carry, but I had put down probably like four liters of water that morning. Um, and electrolytes, not just water, and calories. And I had I had caught myself back up to where I was in a good position. And it was a it was a really relieving feeling, but it was also a really cool feeling because it's like the experiences that I've had in the past at high altitude and in the past with um, big efforts and things like that allowed me to recognize that and know what to do to recover as fast as I could so that the, the trip didn't just tip on its head right out of the gate. All right, lunch is over and we're starting our 16 miles to the next water source. We've got one potentially sketchy water source down here. So we're all loaded up on our water and we'll try to grab just a little bit more at this other water source. But for the most part, we've got to go 16 miles through a dry section to get to a place where we can camp. All right, we just uh, looked at the app and realized that we blew past our water. So we're in the dead zone. We're in it. <laughs> Thankfully, we got a decent amount of water, but I could have got more. Uh, and now we've got 11 miles and change to go to get to more water. So you coming from Denver? Yeah, yeah. Sweet. Yeah. How long have you been out? I started the 28th. A few more people that, that recognized us out there on the trail too, which was a lot of fun. Um, crossed one lady that was on her bike just out there living her best life, her and her dog, and we come right into her camp. Um, and there was another guy there that was stopped and talked to her and realized this dude has the largest pack I had ever seen someone backpack with. 75 pound pack, how far are you oh going? My Goodness, that's more than 75 pounds. We couldn't help ourselves, but just ask him like, where are you coming from? Where are you going, you know? And sure enough, he was doing the whole Colorado trail. He was getting like five miles a day or something like that, hiking all day. He was carrying like 10 plus liters of water. He just didn't know, you know, this is coming from him. He just didn't know like if he'd have access to any water. He was really funny. He was, he was telling us how this was kind of his first big trip and how 
Um, he initially started with like a hundred pound pack. He had, he had just gone out and kind of gathered together whatever gear he could find, but he didn't really know what he was doing. He hadn't researched much. I noticed that he had a very bent trekking pole and kind of asked him what happened there. And he's like, oh, you know, I, I was going and, uh, and I got off trail and I started to go up this really steep part because I thought that's where the trail went and my pack started to pull me over backwards and I used my trekking pole to try to catch myself and it did. He's like, luckily I didn't get hurt. I maybe could have fallen down a cliff and died. My beer oh. fall like the next five feet and got up there and found out it wasn't a trail. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. and then I went back. But he's like, I was able to stop and keep going and then I realized that I needed to shed some weight on my pack. It was just a, a good reminder to us of the value of um, doing test hikes. You know, we, we really try to preach that in the OV100. Get out, test your gear prior, test your limits prior, learn how much water you need, all those kind of things. Oh, well, we made it to this dirt road. Uh, I think we still have eight miles to go till we get to camp. I think Tyler's gonna try to hitchhike, but I don't know that really anyone's gonna drive down in time. We came from way back there today. Today's been a really good day. We just got finished with dinner. Really pleasant, much better temperatures. Solid day of hiking, and I actually feel like it was more of like a recovery day, even though we're getting 23 miles in by the end of today. So it's been awesome. After that, we only hiked probably another four, maybe five miles, which at that point I thought, okay, this is gonna be quick. We're gonna be, we're gonna be at our campsite really soon. Um, that was not the case for me. For whatever reason, after dinner, like the miles just dragged on. They took forever. Uh, I think my legs were getting a little bit tired. How are your feet feeling, Tyler? Um, my feet are feeling like I've done 40 miles on them. Like <laughs> they're not hurting, they're just feeling real tired, I guess. Not happy with my shoes. Um, I'd say my feet are pretty sore. Um, yeah, disappointed in the shoes. I, I'd say at this point in the hike, my, sh my feet never feel this way. Um, so it's a good lesson learned. Don't get these shoes ever again. Camp for us was kind of down in this timber area. Really nice spot. 24 miles for the day clocked with 12 hours exactly since we left our uh, campsite this morning and climbing 3,200 feet in elevation. We dropped way more than that, so there it is, day two. We had deer kind of floating through our campground the whole night, and we found uh, definitely enough bear scat and tracks to uh, make sure that we for sure hung our bear bags that night. You see that light down there? That's our camp. See this right here? It's bear poop. I'm worried the branch isn't strong enough, but. Good job, Derek. Yeah, Derek, cover your butt. Oh. We got it over the triple branch. Wow. Oh, no. It's a creative one. <laughs> you lost a lot of height. <laughs> that is way too flexible of a branch. <laughs> bears, most bears are not taller than me. Well, so. <laughs> you can like break that dead end off. There you go. All right. Come on, Go. That's good. Money. Solid hand. Good enough for black hey, bears. Tyler, I'm going to need your help with this mess you created. <laughs> it's not I don't that know bad. What I'm looking at. Just uh, get it over here. <laughs> Bad. Yeah. <coughs> Just a Wait, my hand's stuck in there, buddy. Ah, impressive. See? Two triple half inches with Dyneema rope. Look at that. And we he, might he, catch a bear, too. Yeah. Because he's going <laughs> to we'll get tangled here, up in this. He's going to start trying to <laughs> sniff it and bite it, and then he's, we're going to start hearing moaning in the night. Come out here, we're going to snare the bear. And then, That'd be sweet. We don't have a permit for that. <laughs> <laughs> my tent smells really bad because of me. But day three, 
Um, I slept pretty dang good last night. I was tired. And my feet, uh, I did get a couple little blisters yesterday with all the dirt that got in my socks and shoes. But nothing too crazy or too bad yet. So hopefully things keep going well. And I think it'll be a fun day. We've got at least a 20 mile day, 4,400 feet of climbing, 2,700 feet of descending and it'll pretty much all be in the really high country. So definitely looking forward to <clears throat> being up here in the high country. All right, we're going. Camp was pretty good. I slept as good as I could for how hot it was. It's just crazy hot up here. I've never been at 11, 12,000 feet and had it be that hot, especially overnight. I mean, it always cools off overnight, so. That's been rough. Um, <clears throat> definitely could use a lighter weight sleeping bag, but I've got a 15 degree model because I'm testing out some insulation. So it's hot, it's very hot, but look at this. We're heading up uh, this area called Black Hawk Trail by Hearts Peak. We came up through a pass right there, very first thing out of the gate. And um, it was just, it was just really pretty. So yesterday on those far mountains over there that have the snow on them, the one on the far left, there's a, there's kind of a pyramid shape. And we were camped clear out there at the base of that yesterday morning. So yesterday we covered a lot of ground. Uh, we've only gone like a mile or two today. So that's, that's pretty wild. If you can see just the left of taste and there's that post. I think that's the top. And uh, 1100. That's a halfway mark, Jerk. Oh. Yeah, we go up to that thing. Other pass. <laughs> Just kidding. Almost 1,200 feet you, from camp so far. Good start to the day. We got the Black Hawk Mountain. Oh, uh, yeah. Then we got up to the pass, and uh, it was really nice because the wind was blowing a little bit. Yeah, just had awesome views, you know, because we're on this pass, and so you can see everything on the other side of the pass and everything we'd walked past um, up until then and that was cool to start actually feeling like I was up in the high mountains of you know this area. So the ribbon cliff here yeah pretty sure that's called section point okay then that's Hermosa Peak we're gonna basically climb up and go around the back side of both of those on the north side of both of those okay and then we just keep going I think there's another peak behind there called our Bolum Pass Basically just head that way till sunrise. <laughs> Bad choice of underwear there, I guess. Yeah, this elastic on the underwear is really stiff. So <laughs> I might be taping that up later today. I've never taped my butt on a hike. You haven't... Uh, Remember Jeff? <laughs> you haven't lived till you've taped your butt. <laughs> we started the talks of finishing the hike and what food we'll be chasing after and trying to finish the hike on time so that restaurants will be open. So far, Taysen's vote was the pizza place across the street from our hotel the first night uh, in Silverton. I said we should go to Pagosa Springs for ribs and they said that was too far. What are you craving, Brigham? Um, I, I could eat a lot. Burgers, pizza, barbecue. All of them at the same time. Chinese, anything. My watch said, Derek, yeah. that as of this morning, I need to um, set aside 87 hours for recovery <laughs> so far from these first two days. So in order to be in good enough shape to be on this trail, I've been doing I've been doing some running every morning, or at least most mornings I try to get out and run, um, as well as trail run specifically up and down um, some inclines so there's definitely some elevation gain and loss. It would have been better if I was able to get more miles in. So far the, the training that I've done has uh, paid off. I felt pretty good for the most part in these first two days so we'll see how it goes the rest of the trip. I try to follow the framework that we created in the Outdoor Vitals 100 mile challenge as much as I can. So I would go trail running from my house. It was about a mile run on the road to get to the trailhead and then I had access to a lot of trails, some good elevation, and mountain terrain. It's definitely important to get elevation and to train at whatever altitude 
that you're gonna be doing your hike at? We got one more hiker behind us. Yeah, just being in this high mountain country just fills the soul for me. Totally recharges me. I feel the most connected to nature and myself and my maker when I'm up here. And uh, there's nowhere I'd rather be. One moment you can be in big mountain cliffs with snow and tons of rock and it can be really rough and and dangerous and then the next moment you can be in meadows with wildflowers and beautiful wildlife and and everything and i just love seeing all the variety i love all the activities that you can do in the mountains whether it's hiking or mountain biking or fishing or hunting or photography or or whatever it is that takes you out i i just love getting out here and experiencing this raw natural beauty you definitely can't go into the mountains especially the high country expecting it to all be fun and games i think what you can expect though is to get the full spectrum of highs and lows you get lows when you're pushing yourself and fighting bugs and trying to figure out where to go and, and all of that. But then you also get these amazing highs when you reach places like this where you've got wildflowers everywhere and you can see for miles and there's no one around to tell you what to do or how to do it and it's just extremely liberating. Time for another phenomenal lunch. Got the uh, a cheese witch, my cheese, my pepperoni in there, and another layer of cheese with a bunch of mayonnaise. Taysen got in a fight with a spider, hit it with his hat, and now his hat has some residual damage. Accessories. Accessories. <laughs> kind of like a Yankee Doodle feather. You don't accessorize in the mountains? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. I feel pretty dang good. My legs and my feet feel way more fresh after just even, you know, that short of a break. Um, and that's kind of a big part of hiking, you know, what we call the perfect 20 mile day. Essentially the idea is to wake up real early, start hiking before you eat breakfast, um, get a few miles down the trail and then take a breakfast break, hike another three or four miles for lunch, take a nice bit of a longer lunch break, another few miles, afternoon break, another few miles, dinner break, another few miles, camp. All right, pass complete. Barren pass, I think. And what it does is it, it breaks up the mileage. It helps a lot to keep our legs and our feet feeling a lot more fresh. And especially up here where we're climbing thousands and thousands of feet at an elevation and dropping again over and over, it's really important to make sure that we have the uh, capacity to keep going, make sure we can get to the camp and finish on time. You know, one of the reasons I really enjoy getting up out here in the mountains is just the chance to, to disconnect. I think too often, we're all probably just a little bit too plugged into our phones or whatever else, what other screen. Being in the mountains, you know, outside and these big areas are surrounded by you know, plants or life or rocks or whatever it is, the trees. It's a lot easier to feel present, which is, I, I think is really important for mental, emotional health. Finished up with lunch and passed this pond. That was where we like looked in. And at first when I looked in, I thought I saw like some fish, a lot of fish but then I realized they were all like kind of the same size and shape and they weren't moving around real, real fast. Then I looked at them and thought they looked like just giant tadpoles. At first we're like, what, what are those? The more we looked at them, we kind of recognized that they look a lot like those axolotl salamander things from Mexico. And so I made a mental note to look those up after we got home at the end of the week to, to see if it's possible for those axolotls to also exist in Colorado, which I did look up and in the end um, found out they relocated a bunch since they are endangered. In Colorado, in the San Juan, some of those high elevation lakes are one of the only um, environments that they actually can thrive in. And so they had moved 
axolotls up there, which was kind of cool. My wife would really love these right here, the Colorado Columbines. There's like a ton all over the place for the last three days I've been seeing them. I don't know why, it's just some of the most pretty country that I've seen today, even though I love the high country. Got some overcast clouds coming through and just this dark timber area. It's cool temperature. I think for me, why I choose to come and do these kind of adventures, um, there's, there's so many reasons. There's, there's aspects of pushing my own limits and things, there's aspects of exploring. But a lot of times it takes a big, stark change from the day to day to learn and to connect with a different side of yourself. And I feel like that's what I'm, I'm getting here. I think everyone in life has challenges. Um, everyone's challenges can be quite different. Uh, but even someone who you think has it all, doesn't. <laughs> There's always something in everyone's life that is troubling and difficult. And I think everyone, because of that, needs to find ways to cope, decompress, and um, just shake, shake things up sometimes. Kind of got into that mode where I'm really feeling that, really feeling that disconnect and just absolutely enjoying it. Look at that. Just these big old waterfalls everywhere. Ratcheting up here in beauty and intensity. We've got some rain starting to come down we got raging rivers and awesome waterfalls and uh, a big old pass to climb a couple hours ago it was hot we weren't talking we we're just kind of going along and now when the wind picks up and the clouds come over and we get into such pretty places it feels like a completely different day it's crazy how much it can swing and how fast Things can change out here. What you doing there, Tyler? I'm trying to sit up. <laughs> I just didn't see for sitting. I scouted this area right here. I didn't scout that rock that was in the back or this rock that was in the back where this pokey pine cone. We hit our dinner time, so we stopped near some water and got some dinner. And the weather, the storm clouds, they just blew right on over so we got a pretty nice evening shaping up now we're starting our last ascent of the day where we're probably gonna have to climb another 12 to 1500 feet and drop just a little bit down to a lake on the other side of this pass and set up camp for the night we're looking at three or four miles hopefully closer to three but a lot of climbing. That section of trail after dinner was like brutal. You could kind of feel the sun baking your calf muscles, the back of your neck, especially going up and zigzagging up that mountain pass. Came across some other hikers that knew us and had a, had a good little stop and chat there. So the YouTube handle is Backpacking Scout? Backpacking Scouter. Scouter. Yeah. And him and his son were out there backpacking. They were filming a little bit and, and that was kind of a cool thing to see. They were both pretty involved and enjoying the time out there together. Well, super well, cool, guys. Hi. Yeah, thank absolutely. You yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Good to meet you. Yeah, have a good, good one. See what do you think, Derek? I think it's really pretty. I think the breeze leaving us abandoned, a little bit rude, but at least it's not middle of the day, middle of the afternoon. Getting close to the top of the pass. It's really hot. There's no wind. Super cool canyon though. Holy crap, it's a hot pass. If that's camp, that looks awesome. Right there? Right down there? That's where I'm camping. <laughs> Whoa. It had been a pretty warm hour or so getting up and over that pass. And we were like, hey, we're gonna camp down there by those lakes. And I was like, I'm gonna swim in that lake. That sounds amazing.
it's a little cold. <laughs> <laughs> he, can't, he can't even breathe. Good. One thing I've learned about swimming in these lakes is my fingers shrink fast enough that I lose my wedding ring really easy. Uh -oh. Seriously, doesn't get any more beautiful than this. I think that cold water does wonders for my feet and legs on long trips like this. It's awesome. It was definitely a highlight of the trip. Well, I uh, split off to go follow Tyler and film him jumping in the glacial lake. Take a swim. Then I left Tyler as he was drying out to go find Brigham and Taysen again and figure out where we're gonna camp. But I've been hiking along the trail and got to the lake that I thought we were gonna be at. Can't find anybody, so heading back up the trail, see if I can see those guys and figure out where we're gonna camp. I was like, have you guys seen Derek? And they're like, no, we thought he was with you. And I'm like, well, he left to go find camp and find you guys. He probably went further down the trail than where you started. I was still only like half dressed, you know, I don't know if I had like socks on or my shoes tied or whatever by the time I got there and and they were telling me like, go find him. I'm like, you guys go find him, you're dressed. <laughs> and uh, and they didn't really want to do anything. So we just started yelling. Great news, everybody. I uh, finally found the uh, place where everybody's camped. So we're in good shape. We got about 20 miles, day three of our first section of the Colorado Trail is in the books. And it was a fantastic day. Today was voted the most preferred best day of the trip so far and hopefully tomorrow continues to rival it. Today we were having a discussion on trail about just growing up and things that um, you know got us into the outdoors. One thing that my parents always did was they really prioritized time with this and they prioritized you know just just getting out and having family experiences and that will always trump whatever gear you're wearing, whatever gear you're packing. We've passed so many people out here that don't have you know the gear that, that we would choose or, or whatever their heavy packs um, but you know they're out there having an, an amazing adventure and that's something that my parents gave me and I, some, I that's something that I hope all of you guys can find because you can't have an experience if you don't put yourself in a position to have an experience bad weather poor gear experiences um, are better than than if everything went right you learn you grow as a human and and um, there's just, there's just a lot of good there. So just wanted to take a second to publicly thank my parents for always helping me get outdoors and helping me fall in love with, with what I get to do now for a career. Too slow. Day four, last night I slept pretty good. I kept waking up and having to toss and turn a little bit, but it cooled down a lot more, so I slept quite a bit better. On the right foot where that blister popped yesterday, it actually doesn't feel like anything. I kind of just left the moleskin on there, and um, it's kind of just flattened out and just doesn't really feel like there's anything there now, which is which is nice, but I'm sure after the trip, when I go to pull off that moleskin, it's not gonna feel too great. We've got about 21, 22 miles to do today is the plan. And I'm gonna inhale a bug while Holy I'm trying crap. to talk here. Um, I've got three in my nose. <laughs> <laughs> so 20, about 22 miles is what I'm expecting today. 4,500 feet of downhill and 2,700 feet of uphill. Most of that uphill will come uh, at the, the tail end of the day. So should be fun. Oh, oh. <laughs> about lost it. <laughs> I was feeling really impressed with the trail building in the area because there was just um, tons and tons of steep slopes with washes coming in and out, and the trail conditions were just awesome. Like it was way less rocky than what we experienced on the Uinta Highline Trail. I mean, there was cliffs and rocks everywhere, but the trail building had a lot of attention put into it and the trail maintenance had a lot of attention put to it. I would say today was also a day of, of seeing a lot, a lot more people. Morning. Good How's it going? Going good. Where are you headed today? Uh, I'm going to resupply in Silverton and then figure out 
Oh, gotcha. How much time I have left. <laughs> and a big reason for that is we're going to be crossing a highway, which is a great access point for people to jump on the trail and uh, day hike it, uh, bike it, and people are jumping on and off this train as well um, to get access to the backcountry. Oh, made it look easy. I was, I was really hoping for like a full on like bear up? hug, <laughs> like roll over <laughs> it, you know. These guys are everywhere, man. It's living the life. Trail name? Stargazer. Stargazer, cool. So you guys are father and son crew. How many days in? Uh, 27 days. Where are you from? <laughs> We're from Japan. Uh, near, near Osaka. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. We've passed a lot of uh, different types of hikers the last four days. Um, there's been, you know, a lot of through hikers that have their gear very dialed. They seem well prepared, well equipped. And then we also passed a lot of people that are like struggling. The greatest value, reasons why to go or be or try to be as ultralight as possible. I think it's only done through a process. That's a lot of batteries. <laughs> we have a rogue toenail that wore through the lipo tape just for the other toe. By default, people think they need a bunch of things that adds up to a lot of weight. But I don't think it makes sense to be what one would say ultralight until a person has gone through the process of going backpacking over and over and over again to learn the lessons about what they need, what they don't need, and what are fears and what are justified contingencies. Go backpacking. Just go backpacking. Take whatever you got and go. And if you liked it, go again. If you keep liking it, keep going. If you're aware of things like weight, comfort, and mileage, and how they relate to each other, the lessons are learned themselves, and they're much better absorbed than a guy like me talking to a camera and saying, this is why you should do it. We're stopped for lunch, got 12 miles on the day, and it's about 12.30. Crushing it. Crushing it for sure. We've dropped a lot of elevation. And uh, I'm feeling it a bit in my knee, getting a little, just trying to stretch it out down here. Me and Tyler are on our, our yoga mats, but. With the yoga ball. <laughs> With the yoga ball. You know you've been working hard out here when your shirt looks like this. And it's rock hard. That's some hard work on the trail <laughs> and why we take electrolytes. I'm covered in salt, head to toe, and my shirt is almost stiff enough it could stand up on its own. Just starting the after lunch mile and it's not that fun it's quite hot and uh, getting ourselves going again is always tricky but looks like we're going to be dropping about 1700 feet down towards the animos river and then we'll be climbing straight back the up the other side Another 1,700 feet. Maybe you can see it, maybe not. Kind of through these trees. There's a river down there. Down at the bottom of this valley. And the railroad tracks, we've got to cross over those. This day was mainly all down and then all up. Um, we were crossing what we called the Grand Canyon of the Colorado Trail because I actually pulled some numbers on it and it was almost identical to the <laughs> equivalent of crossing the Grand Canyon. Uh, it's like, nearly it's like 26 miles across this canyon from our campsite to the other side and about the same amount of elevation descent and climbing you know i haven't really considered much doing a lot of hikes like the colorado trail it's like almost 500 miles long i believe if you did the whole thing getting away from my family or work like technically i'm working on this trip but you really just have to plan on a through hike taking a lot of time. And I don't know that that's something that I will personally be doing all at once, but that, you know, in hundred mile sections like we're doing, um, this is great. This is an opportunity for me to get out and see some of this amazing backcountry, but I don't have to take off multiple months at a time and just take off one week at a time and do sections. There's a train you can see through the trees barely. They're like, what the heck? He's a Yeti up here on the rock. <laughs> <laughs> Tasting interrupted his bath to film it. Just got done taking a nice little bath in the altitude. I bet this hoodie will be dried out 30 minutes or less. That's one, how good the hoodie is, but two, just how hot it is when you're moving around down here. Well, there's the train tracks and a really shot up sign. It's this really old kind of historic touristy passenger train that you can start in Durango and you ride it all the way up to Silverton. And this train is a really unique train because 
It's roadless, it's in a wilderness area. It's kind of a cool way for people to just get up really into, get up into these really high old mountain mining towns. We were just feeling pretty good and casual at that point. And we're like, well, I think you just, you know, follow the train tracks until you see the trail go up the hill and then we go up the hill. Well, we walked down the train tracks for a while and then we're like, well, where's that trail gonna be? So that whole train walk was not on the CT. <laughs> We just walked the tracks for no reason, except for fun. Since there's a different trail right up here, that maybe we can see in. Gonna go find maybe alternative trail, maybe. We had a decent little detour there. We thought we stumbled on a little lake, but I think it's just the river kind of all blocked up. It's awesome. You try to figure out how to cross this water. Oh, he made the jump. And we've got to figure out how to get over here. So it's really cool to know that right now as we're doing this 100 miles, other people are doing these 100 miles and just taking the opportunity to get outside, form new relationships, you know, connect with themselves. The comments that I see, the feedback that we see is like nothing else that we do at Outdoor Vitals. And I'm excited to hear where you guys that are or have uh, are actively doing the 100 miles where you guys ended up how it all went. I've been reading those for a while in the Facebook group and I know there's more to come in. Just finished eating dinner in a boulder field. Now we're kind of struggling to climb this boulder field as our first after dinner mile. How you feeling, Derek? Oh, I'm too full for this. I feel like my legs are starting to loosen up a little bit. My legs are loosening, but... It's, uh, it's a lot of rocks. I was just reflecting on last year's, he went to Highline and I was thinking about how I was feeling so sick and bad going through Polar Bear Pass and how I had no appetite kind of the rest of the hike. And I think what's interesting about that is the fact that I think the same thing could have happened to me this year. I was able to learn from that experience get super aggressive with hydration, some electrolytes, calories, and bounce back from that night one where I was cramping up and kind of getting shaky. And a lot of people try stuff, sometimes it doesn't work out and you can always learn, apply, and go back. I think it takes sometimes big trips like these to see that you're progressing, see that you're learning. And yeah, I think you should just always be pushing your limits at times. and seeing if you're better at coping with it than before. I thought you were an ultra light gram weenie like the rest of us. Well, you know? I literally grabbed the platypus, like the dirty bag, out of the package and shoved it in there. And that was wrapped up in the dirty bag. I never like unrolled it. <laughs> a real ultra lighter wouldn't bring a rubber band to hold the dirty bag together. Ah, yeah, but he's OCD. <laughs> All right, we made it to camp four. After 22 miles and change, got a gorgeous campsite. That's Brigham off in the distance. Didn't quite have enough space, but look at these views. Tomorrow we'll head farther up that canyon and do some pretty serious climbing. We'll then peek out on top and basically run the ridge for the most part over to Stony Pass, where we'll be getting off the Colorado Trail to head down a different trail and head back towards Silverton. So. Tomorrow is the last day, which is exciting, but also quite sad because the last two days especially have been phenomenal and it's always hard to leave this place. It is day five, 5.45 a.m. We're packing up to try to do a big climb out of here. So we'd like to climb out a lot of the steep stuff before the sun hits this side of the canyon. How'd you sleep? Um, pretty good. One of the better nights on the trip, I'd say. Um, it's still really hot. Like I, I brought a 15 degree top quilt that has a specific insulation I wanted to test in it. And I probably could have brought a 40 degree top quilt or something way, way, uh, warmer or for warmer temperatures. But other than that, Slept pretty dang good last night, so. I left camp and started a little bit earlier than the other guys. I had my stuff just backed up sooner, trying to take advantage of this cool morning. Right now, the first thing we gotta do today is climb up a few thousand feet up and out of this canyon. I think that out of the entire 100 mile section, the morning of day five 
hiking the rest of the way up out of Elk Creek Canyon is by far my favorite. Look at how pretty this country is. We really enjoyed the climb up and out of there awesome. that morning. It's a really beautiful area, really varied terrain. Cute little guy. You're gonna come run up my leg, aren't you? Yeah. It's camouflage. I know, I didn't see him until he moved and I was staring straight at that dark rock. Hi. <laughs> so we got another day in the mountain. We got at least 15 miles, maybe 22 if we have to walk down that road. But another thing is I'm just really excited to see my wife. I have enjoyed the trip, but haven't seen her for quite a while and just really looking forward to hearing how things went for her. Way down there, Brigham's coming. The more you hike with people, the more you get to know them, right? And I always equate Derek to uh, a horse that, that's now pointed home after a long day out. When you point a horse to go back to the barn at the end of the day, they start to pick up speed and they don't usually slow down unless you really, you know, force them to slow down. Got to the top of that stony canyon and had opened up into this green bowl. Still got quite a bit to climb though, it looks like. And Brigham, Brigham's the number two guy. No matter what you do, he will be in the number two position. If you run up to a pass, he will run up that pass right behind you. For some reason, both of these guys, I think just got in their minds like, hey, we can get out of here at a decent time. It's the last day, let's push. And uh, they were ready to go. <laughs> we spotted Jason and Tyler um, way down at the bottom. And it'll be at least half an hour before they get up here. So we're probably gonna just hang out and have breakfast. And and then, I don't know, we'll play Uno or something. This is why we can't have nice food. <laughs> Tyler's not allowed to have nice things, I guess. But, check this out. This is why I run these. I've been running these hiking for like five years. <laughs> you smashed them, dude. I and stepped right on You them. stepped right on them. Oh, you definitely need those glasses. <laughs> Look at that. 100%. Wow. I always thought you were goofy for having those, but... You are spot on. There's an animal that looks like a marmot down there, but it has a really fluffy tail. Oh, there's two of them. I don't know what it is. Are you guys doing the CTU? Or we did the first 100 guys? miles from Durango, and then okay. we'll, we'll do that for this year, so we'll finish at Stony Pass today. Okay. And then we'll come back and do another 100 miles next year. You're coming from Denver? Yeah. How many days in are you? Uh, day, day 21. Sweet. Nice. That's yeah. a good time. We've made it to the top of Elk Creek. North Rim up the Grand Elk Creek. <laughs> hey, you made it. Awesome. Poop up here. Beautiful up here. So awesome. <laughs> As soon as we got there, they were like ready to go. And me and Taysen were like, well, let's take a break. And Taysen was like, let me show you these landmarks that I've been to. And uh, they weren't really wanting to hang around. So they just left again and went that way. Me and Taysen actually diverged from the, the planned trail, went up to another ridge and just kind of took our time to look at everything up there. Yeah, that's one of the only areas that I've ever been where you can get up on a point and see nothing but 13 and 14,000 foot peaks and know that there's almost no oiled road within 30 miles. Okay, I think this is it, the last big climb of the trip. It's uh, this huge hill behind me, I guess mountain, whatever you wanna call it. I think it's pretty cool when we can finish big days that are 20 to 22 miles long and still feel Good. Like not like we've overexerted. We've enjoyed the days. We haven't pushed too hard, especially as a group of guys, a group of coworkers, and a group of friends. That it's rare you get four people that happen upon each other that can go and crank out these miles and stay healthy. Definitely lucky for that. We've got a phenomenal team here at Outdoor Vitals. So that was our big landmark for finishing this 100 miler, this ridiculous country. Now we're gonna see if anyone wants to give us a ride.
what was on people's mind that day though was definitely this concept that we were not finishing at a car or finishing at a trailhead. We were finishing at a high mountain pass on a dirt road, which then we would potentially have to hike all the way back into Silverton, which was like, like up to nine miles or, or, or more away. This particular trail is on a loop called the Alpine Loop in the San Juans where a lot of people will Jeep and ride uh, UTVs and things like that. And so there's a lot of people at this trailhead. The thing is we were passing some people, we said hi to a few people, um, got 200 yards down the trail and the first vehicle that passed us picked us up and told us they'd take us down the mountain. So um, incredibly lucky. This is the first time in my life I've ever tried to hitchhike, um, but where this was, you know, guys going past us at five miles an hour with their windows down, I think it's a little easier to be like, hey, could you just, could we just hop in the back of your truck and get to the bottom of the mountain? Getting out of our shuttle. Tayson's gonna go into Silverton with the key. We don't wanna, we don't wanna ride to get a ticket, so he's gonna hop up front. Well, we're just gonna wait here in the shade until Tayson gets back with the car and uh, do nothing. All in all, we were a little over 102 miles, 19, 1,888 feet of elevation gain. It was a pretty big week, and we did this trip alongside hundreds of other people. And by doing the trip with all of these other people and training together um, as a group, we hiked more than 50,000 miles together over the summer of 2023. So, what's the plan of returning to the Colorado Trail? Are you planning to do section two next year or what? That's the plan is to head back and do section two next year um, for us or section two for us next year. <laughs> Look at those dogs. Stepped in a little water today, so they're, hey, rinsed, they're, out, they're so. rinsed out a bit. There you go. Well, I didn't really know what to expect exactly coming into the Colorado Trail. Um, definitely well worth doing. We do have family life. We do have other responsibilities. We can't do the whole thing at once, but we can do 100 miles at a time. This trail really <laughs> exceeded my expectations and uh, there was just so much more amazing country that we got to see than, than what I expected from my other experiences here. You never quite know what snow or wildfires or, or team dynamics are going to bring a whole year in advance. So uh, we'll just keep our fingers crossed that we can go back and do more. I'd love to do some more. Um, yeah.